Um, Mike's going to go ahead and start letting folks in, and as they trickle in, we'll just do it. And just a reminder, some, some uh, I guess, housekeeping. Uh, please, we're going to be recording this session, and we would like for folks to keep the mute on their 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 session, um, and then we'll hold the Q and A at the end. So if you have questions, so you don't forget them, just write them down or put them inside the chat because we can get a lot of people, you know, uh, into you know a lot of people answering the questions and so forth and so on. So I want to be sure that you guys get all the answers to everything that you need. Today we're going to spend some time on explaining what the next 13 weeks of this training looks like. And we're also going to spend some time on, if you see me looking in different directions, because my camera is facing one way and uh, the other stuff's facing the other way. Okay. So <laughs> um, we're going to talk about what the next 13 weeks looks like, what each session is going to look like, and then we're going to get into the first topic of the SOP. So uh, allow me the opportunity to, to explain where the SOP came from and what it means. So SOP is an acronym. It stands for Standard Operating Procedure, right? <clears throat> I was in the military for, for nine years. I served in the United States Marine Corps. And many years after getting out of the military, and like I've been, I've been in the real estate industry for about 17 years now. I've been coaching for about 10 of those 17 years. And so you know, I've we've had so many different kind of coaching platforms and coaching sessions and ways. And the one thing that I realize is there are very few books or coaching sessions or methods that help folks create a manual, like a manual for their business, right? There's a lot of direction out there. But there are very few platforms that create a manual for the actual growth of your business. And so what I decided to write last year, late last year, I sat down and I said, Ben, I, I, I had this epiphany. And I said, when I, when I was in the Marine Corps, I could go to any military installation, walk into the armory because I was an armor, right? I could walk into the armory, all right? And I could pull the SOP, the Standard Operating Procedures book, right? And when pulling that book, I was able to open it up. And if it was appropriately updated and it was in good standard, I could run that armory with the knowledge that I've learned from that book, right? And so... What I find interesting is that a organization like the United States Marine Corps runs at such standard, but most businesses don't. And so the problem with a lot of businesses is they have no direction. And now let's be real. Each and every one of you, if you're in the real estate industry, are a business owner, right? So if you're a business owner, you should have direction. You should have intent. You should have why and how you do things right? And what we find is that most businesses are just leaning forward and the feet are catching them one step in front of the other one, one step in front of the other one. Mike, let people in, please. Uh, one step in front of the other one, right? And so when you're doing that, you're not finding yourself in a position where you could see something and say, this is how we run this. This is my return on investment on this or something that we created, which is ROT, return on time. What's my return on time with this investment that I'm making or this particular method that I'm working on, right? And so the SOP or over the next 13 weeks, we're going to give you a basic standard of how to develop the SOP for your business. Now, this is going to help you in a few ways. Number one, it's going to help you catch the things that you're doing very well, and it's going to help you catch the things that maybe you need to work on or you're not doing very well, right? And for a lot of real estate agents, like I said, you know, we're like this, we're leaning forward and we're just running forward. We have zero direction, but we know what needs to be done. And those of us that have been in the business for a little bit, we know, we know we got to do social media. We know that. We know we got to lead generate. We understand that. We know that we have to, you know, show houses or list properties or door knock or whatever. We know those things, but we don't ordain them in a way that it's standardized that if I, God forbid, got sick and went to the hospital for three weeks, someone else on my team could pick up this SOP and run the business exactly the way I run the business and have zero fault right? 
And so that's what we're going to develop with you guys today. We're going to begin today. And, and I would love to see you guys here every week for the next 13 weeks. Guys, I'm committed. I'm going to do this with you guys. They charge anybody to be here. I'm just excited to be able to have a presence with you guys. And so we're going to, we're going to run with this. All right. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys. So we could get into understanding the SOP. Uh, like I said, if you got questions throughout the process, go ahead and write them in there. Um, <clears throat> and, and write them in the chat. We'll get to them or just write them down on a piece of paper so you can voice them out at the end of the SOP. So I just gave you the story behind the SOP, right? Now, the SOP is truly developing a foundation for your business. The foundation that you build for your business will determine exactly what you can do moving forward, right? So if I build a tiny foundation, I can build a tiny house or I can put a manufactured home on it, or you know, I can put one of those tiny homes that you see on HGTV, right? If I build a large foundation, I could put a bigger home on it. If I build a deep, well-developed well, well foundation and larger foundation, I could build a skyscraper on it, right? And so let's, we're speaking in military, I mean, I'm sorry, in, in real estate terms because most of us are real estate professionals on here, right? So that's what we're going to work on doing is truly building the foundation. So this is what you're going to need. And so I would love for you guys to take a screenshot of this, take a picture of this, do whatever you need to do. But next week, when we go hard again and we're back at it, I'm asking you, bring a three ring binder with you. Sit in an office, sit in your home, be in a comfortable space, be at a desk. Please try not to be in your car for the next SLP session because you're not going to get out of it what you expect to get out of it, right? Because if you can't sit down and take notes, if you can't sit down and grab the coach, grab the method, grab what's going on, it's going to be extremely difficult for you, right? Have some loose leaf paper, three ring binder, put them together in a folder, okay? Um, pencil and pen, pencil and pen, not pencil or pen. And I'll explain that in the future, right? Because we're going to use pen for some things and pencil for other things. Uh, and then I just ask you to come with two things, the desire to succeed and the desire to take action or the will to take action, not the desire, but the will to take action. Um, you know, I, I wrote two books in the past. One of them was called The Blueprint for Real Estate, Right. And the blueprint was interesting because it gave folks kind of something similar to this, a standardized kind of way to really get started in the real estate industry. And what I found was that people would talk to me and they would say, hey, the blueprint was great. And I would say, OK, cool. How much of it did you adapt? How much of it did you do? And then like crickets, people would like freak out like they would be like, oh, uh, 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 right, because. Oftentimes, I can tell you, like, just by a show of hands, how many of you have ever had an idea that you never implemented? right? Should be all of us, right? Like I've seen people go, oh my God, that business, they're doing so well. I thought about that five years ago. I should have did it, right? And so we wrote the second book. The second book is called Take Action, right? Because it's all about actually taking action. So my thing here is I could spend the next 13 weeks with you preaching the SOP to you, but if you don't actually do on a weekly basis what's necessary to be done, this is not just like a regular training. This is more of a coaching. This is more of a, I mean, treat this like a like if you paid five grand for a college education, like treat it that way, right? Because then you'll feel the need to do the work, okay? All right, I'm sorry. All right, so chapter one, we're going to talk about your why, and that's going to be today, okay? We're going to talk about your why. We're going to talk about the understanding of why it's important to, to have the SOP and what your why is and why you wake up every morning, okay? Chapter two is going to be what we call the 531. The 531, next week, when we get into the 531, we're going to be talking about and implementing an exercise that really discusses the next five years of your life, the next three years of your life, the next one year of your life, and how we're going to implement those things into the SOP so we can plan accordingly. The next piece we're going to touch is a financial affidavit, and we'll talk, again, this is week three, right? We'll talk about this when it comes, right? The financial affidavit is going to allow you the opportunity to understand your finances. Guys, you can't run a business without knowing where your money is going. OK, you cannot run a business without knowing your finances. You cannot run a business without understanding what an ROI is. You cannot run a business without monitoring where you're monetizing. 
monitoring where you're monetizing, right? Because you could spend money on something for a year and say it never works and you're gonna cancel it. And if you haven't really truly valued it, you don't know if it works or doesn't work. By the way, there's a whole nother system to that too, right? If you could spend you know, $1,000 a month on realtor.com or zillow.com or google.com or facebook.com to generate leads, and but if you don't call the leads, you don't pick up the phone, you don't put in the work, that's not going to work either, right? So we'll get more into a financial affidavit. Then we're going to talk about disk profiles and disk personalities. The reason that the disk profile and the disk personality is important is because it really helps people divide up into different personalities, a dominance, influence, steadiness, and compliance, right? Now, when you look at, I just noticed I had a spelling error. I hope nobody caught it. All right. So <laughs> when you look at the disk profile, this is what it's going to allow you to do. First of all, I'm going to send everybody on this week. When we do this week four, I'm going to send everybody a link to be able to go ahead and get your own disk profile. OK, I'll send you the link when we get there because I don't want you to get too far ahead. But when you're able to do the disk profile, you're going to see what your personality traits are. In that disk profile, it's also going to tell you who you best work with and who you best connect with. And if you can study this document, you can study the dominance, the influencer, the steadiness and the compliance. It's also going to allow you the opportunity to have conversations with people, your people, your clients, right? Depending on what you're doing. If you're a recruiter, if you're a manager, if you're a realtor, if you're a, a, a broker, owner, whatever it is. It's going to allow you the opportunity to have conversations with people and in those conversations, be able to um, understand which profile they fall into based on the responses and body language and things that they're doing. When you understand that, ladies and gentlemen, when you understand profiles like that, when you can study this very, very well, you know you, you're a salesperson, you know how to adjust yourself to the personality you're working with. Does that make sense to you guys, right? Like, for instance, somebody who is an S and a C, numbers might be extremely important to them, and they might want to really walk through that house and look at that property and really dissect it and understand the layout. Where somebody who's a D is going to walk through a property in five minutes. How many of you have had a client like that, right? where they walk into the house and they take a five minute stroll through the house and they know they want it. And you're like, dude, what? Okay, let's go. Let's go write an offer, right? That's your high D. Your influencer is going to talk to you. They're going to talk to the other agent. They're going to talk to the sellers. They're going to talk to the dog in the backyard and talk about how they have a dog. And they're going to spend a ton of time in the house without even looking at the house, right? And so once you begin to understand these personalities and understand what you're, who you're working with, it allows you the opportunity to really grow your business because it allows you to be mirrored. And if you can mirror your client accordingly, you're in to win, right? So that'll be week four. Week five, we're going to talk about avatars, right? Now, if you don't know what avatar is, it's something you create, right? It's a, it's a person you create. And your avatar is who you're going to focus on in your business, right? My avatar over time has changed and that's okay. It can change for you too, right? My current avatar, I don't know. I got a few of them, but my SOP, if you look at it and you were talking about who my avatar is, it would probably be military personnel because I have a passion for the military. Right. And so being a Marine for nine years, I understand military folks. I understand what they're going through. I understand what it's like to move a hundred times a career. Right. And so I, I've thoroughly learned the VA loan and things of that nature. Your avatar might be different. Your avatar might be, I mean, there's a reason why there are sports and entertainment divisions and luxury divisions and, you know, first time home buyer seminars and the people who do those things, those are their avatars. Right. If I'm if I'm hosting a first buyer, a first time home buyer seminar, chances are I want to specialize in first time home buyers and helping them achieve the American dream of owning a home. Right. That's my avatar. If I am at all the parties and all the events and all the this and all of that, and I'm sitting front row and VIP and this and that, chances are my avatar is entertainment. 
or even sports and entertainment, right? Um, if I'm at the country club and I'm here and I'm there, right? Because I'm being proactive about who my avatar is, right? Maybe I'm into luxury, right? And I'm going to those events and those fundraisers and anywhere that people with high-end properties will hang out. That's where I'm going to be. That might be my avatar. So we're going to work a bit on this on chapter five. Week six, we're going to get into the SWOT analysis. Now, if you don't know what a SWOT analysis is, it allows you, when you do this exercise, it allows you to understand your strengths and your weaknesses as a business. This is not you personally, although some of the strengths and the weaknesses built into the business may be you and the way you react or act, right? So strength and weaknesses of your business, and then we're going to talk about outside of your business, what the opportunities and threats to your business are, right? What's changing? What's happening? What's the market like, right? Is it an opportunity or threat? Is there another business coming into town trying to take over and do something different? Are they an opportunity or a threat, right? Because a new business coming into town could be you could buy them out, bring them in, or they're going to grow and put you out of business, right? So which is it? When you have a true understanding of this, it allows you the opportunity to develop your business accordingly with its strengths, understand the weaknesses and hire to those weaknesses, study your opportunities and go after them and pay attention to the threats that are out there and be able to protect your business from those threats, right? So we're going to dig into this pretty deeply when, when we get to this part, okay? And then the guys, some of these weeks are going to be pretty interactive. I'm going to be calling on folks and stuff like that. So if you did do your homework that week or whatever it was, you might, you know, you might get picked on. I'm just saying, I don't expect you to hide and not come to the next class. Just be honest. Say, hey, man, I didn't have a chance to do it, but I'll catch up. Cool. We'll move on to the next person. I do not want you to feel like if you if you didn't do the homework, you're not going to show. I don't want that. Like, come every single week. OK, seventh week, we're going to talk about vision and mission. Now, a lot of folks will take the why and then they'll talk about vision and mission right after your why. But I don't like to do that. You notice how much work we put in before we even came up with a vision and mission for our team, right? For our businesses, okay? We put in all that work to really get an understanding, right? Because the vision and mission could change over time, but you got to know things. You got to know your business. You got to know your avatar. You got to know how you're presenting yourself. You got to know who you're going after. And so when you know that, that's how you're able to create that vision and mission. We'll spend some time on that. Now, I will say something on a quick pause. Some of these classes, some of these days, some of these weeks might be 30 minutes and some of them might be an hour. What I promise you this is I will always ensure that I'm respectful of your time and that we don't surpass that one hour mark. Okay, guys? So it'll always be Eastern Standard Time, 11 p.m. to 12 p.m. Sometimes we might finish a little early. Other times I'm gonna make sure we hit to that hour and do my very best to never cross it over and respect for you and your time. OK, week eight, we're going to get into a social media plan of attack. Now, this is not about, you know, uh, I'm not going to give you a class on how to do reels, bro. This is YouTube for that. Right. What we are going to talk about is how to appropriately plan for how you will utilize social media to build your business. Now, you'll often see plan of attack on my on my structure. I've built all of this with a mindset of a military standard. OK, and so you guys we're going to talk about squads and platoons and building teams and all kinds of stuff in this session. And so everything that you have in front of you is always going to be your plan of attack. Okay. Now we'll talk about where and how often and to who, right? Cause we've got that avatar, right? Who are we marketing to? Who are we speaking to? And are we going to be mad if we're speaking to this group and this group doesn't work with us, right? Because for a very long time, I marketed to luxury real estate. For a very long time, I was with a company called Douglas Elliman, and Douglas Elliman is a luxury brokerage, and I utilized that advantage of having their name to tap into a luxury market. And one of my friends bought a house without me. Right now, raise a hand if that hurts when your friend buys a house without you or doesn't buy your product, right? That hurts, right? And so I said to him, I said, and I'm going to call him out. I said, Adam. Hey, congratulations on your house. By, by the way, I got an invite to the housewarming party, which hurts even more, right? So now I'm like, 
Adam, why, you know, why didn't you use me just out of curiosity? And he said, man, I didn't think you would sell in my price point. Does that make sense to y'all? Because all my marketing and all my forward presentation was in the luxury market. So he basically said, I, I, was, he, I was embarrassed. I didn't, I didn't want to ask you, if you're selling multi-million dollar properties, why would you help me with this $250,000 purchase? Right? So of course, I was like, for you, anytime, dude. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's you. You're my friend, right? <laughs> and so, but understanding your avatar and promoting to them and really pushing to them, you can't get upset when someone that is outside of your avatar space doesn't work with you. Okay? Um, week nine. We're going to get into legitimate systems and systems in play and what you're using to control your business, right? So what your CRM is, how are you lead generating, what your team platform is, if you're a team member or a team owner or a broker owner or an organizational owner or whatever the case is, how, what is your platform and how are you developing your platform? And I'm going to give you a strategic play on how my partner and I have built the team that we have and how we've platformed it and built it out, okay? And I'm gonna give that all to you. I'm gonna draw it out, it's gonna be on video, you're gonna have it all, right? And then we're gonna talk about your marketing, not just only your social media marketing, but how you present yourself to the rest of the world through marketing, okay? Next piece, week 10, we're gonna talk about time and schedule. We're gonna talk about utilizing that Google Calendar like if it was the Bible of how your day runs, okay? We're going to talk about how to utilize your time, and we're going to talk about ROT, return on time. We're going to talk about studying and understanding the time that you put in and what the results of that time are, the time that you put in and what benefit came from the time that you put in to whatever it is that you did, okay? And this is personal and business. We're going to talk about family. We're going to talk about hobbies, but we're also going to talk about how you run your business on a daily basis. Okay. Week 11, we're going to find the mind map and I'm going to show you a couple great tools that you can use to mind map your business. And these are, some of these tools are free, right? And I'll show you how to get in. Some of them, like you could just use a whiteboard or a piece of paper, right? But I'm going to show you what a mind map looks like so that we can begin plan implementation. What does that mean? Everybody talks about business planning sometime in October, November. There's always like big business planning, you know, or, uh, classes and stuff like that. As if January 1st was the only day of the year you should be planning your business, right? And so what we want to do is create plan and implementation for, forget about the year of 2020 or 2022 or 2023 or 20, forget about that. My forward movement planning implementation, that's it. What does my next six months look like? What does my next 12 months look like? What does my next three years look like? What does my next five years look like? And we're going to put a lot of plan and implementation together, utilizing what we call the mind map, okay? Now, chapter 12, we're going to begin getting into what success means to you, okay? And the, this is like probably one of the most important topics, in my opinion, because when you get into this, after you've already organized and planned and implemented, implemented, right? Implemented, sorry, implemented, right? Um, and now we begin to get into the conversation of what success means to you. I've had conversations with agents that go, David, coach me, coach me, but I don't need a plan to become a multimillionaire. I need a plan to make a hundred thousand a year, or I need a plan. I had a, a single mother of three tell me one time. I need a plan to make $60,000 a year. And at the time when she told me that, I was like, my mind was like, like twitching, like, what? You know, you're in real estate. Do you know how much you could potentially? But it was more important to her to be at every cheerleading event, every baseball game, every basketball game, every, you know, every activity that her three kids had than it was to work day and night for clients. So she wanted a plan on how she could use her time accordingly to make her 60 or break the 60, any, but her minimum was 60. She already had a house. She knew what her cost was. She knew what her mortgage was. She knew where she needed to be in life. And that was what was important to her. So we came up with a plan for that. It might be different for you, right? You might want to live in another country and run your business from there. You might want to work out of multiple states. You might want to have a team that dominates all 50 states, the United States. Like, 
whatever your plan is and your success plan is, we want to talk about it, right? And then we're going to talk about gratitude and what you're grateful for. And then we'll get into everything else. So the rest of this, let me turn this off for a second. We'll get right into, I'm not sharing my screen anymore, am I? No. All right. I escaped out of it, so I'm not sharing my screen anymore. Now it's just me and you. So let me turn this way for a second. So any questions on how the next 13 weeks are going to go or anything like that? I'll open it up right now a few minutes before we get into the why session. Hi, David. Hey, who's speaking? It's May, May Reed. Hey, what's up, May? Hey, uh, can we, uh, are we, uh, are you recording it? And can we access the recording? Every session is going to be recorded. Every single session. Oh, great. Yes, and every every single session will be recorded. And for everyone that's registered on the Eventbrite, um, everyone will receive an email with the recorded session. Thank you so much. That would be awesome. 100%. Michael's in charge of that. He's going to have the recording scheduled for you and he'll have it set up. Okay. All right. Any other questions What before we move in? Hey, David, I, I just want to say, I think I speak for everyone when I say thank you so much for doing this, not charging us anything. And I'm part of your organization at EXP and you do this and, you know, you could charge a lot of money for this. And I appreciate you reaching out and doing this and giving back. No, man, I, pre I appreciate that. I appreciate you being here with us. And honestly, share the, share the wealth, like share the word, let people know to come on board and hang out with us, you know, 100%. Happy to do it. All right, so let's get into your why real quick. Um, I'm going to share with you quickly my story and, and how I came to my why and how it, it became massively important to me and why, and why your why is important for this particular SOP session. And so I'm going to get a little passionate with y'all. I'm going to get vulnerable with you guys. And, you know, I just want you guys to take it, absorb it, and put it to work because after this, I'm going to have you guys work on an exercise to figure out your why. Now, many of you may actually think you know your why, right? And after we talk about this today, you might actually question it. And you might have to dig a little bit deeper, okay? So I had a coach. 2020, you know, uh, uh, COVID's happening. I'm sitting with my coach. And she gets into the conversation of my why. And so I, my, your why, by the way, may change from time to time. It may change to be different from this year and three years from now, your why might adjust because life happens, right? So you might have life changes that are happening and you might have things that shift. You might have, you know, uh, 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 things that just appear and make your, your heart and your soul completely different than where you are, right? So me, I'll explain to you guys. I'm a father. I have four daughters, okay? I'm in a blended family. I have a wonderful wife. And I have a mother and a mother-in-law that, that live and depend on us as well. And so for me, when I was asked what my why was, for me, it was a very simple and quick answer. My why is my family. Be able to take care of my family, right? And my coach dug into me and she said, well, why? I was like, like, I thought I was in some kind of like twilight zone where I was arguing with a four-year-old at this point right now, right? And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like this, what do you mean? Why do I want to take care of my family? And every time I gave her an answer, every time I gave her an answer, she asked me, okay, but I don't understand. Like, how could that possibly be why you wake up in the morning? right? Like why you put on your feet on the ground, take that breath of fresh air in the morning. She said, what is it really that you're dialing down to? Why do you want to do that? Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to do that? And finally, we came to the conclusion and every answer I was giving led to one word and it was freedom. And sometimes you guys will see me and I wear that like a patch on my chest, freedom. My hundred percent why falls on one word freedom. That is it. Simple as that. Now, 
what freedom means to me and what freedom means to you could be potentially very different, right? Very different. When I say freedom, I'm saying financial freedom. I'm saying family freedoms. I'm saying the freedom to do whatever the heck I want, whenever I want. Now, that might sound selfish, egotistical, whatever you want to call it. When I look at you and I go, I want the freedom to do whatever I want, whenever I want. I want to work when I want and play when I want. That might sound egotistical. It might sound personal. It might, but you know what? That's me. That's my why. Your why could be different. And newsflash, ladies and gentlemen, your why is okay. It's okay to be selfish when you're trying to design your why and understand it. It doesn't have to be about anybody else, believe it or not, because it's your why. You ever heard the saying, you can't do for somebody else unless you do for yourself first? You've heard this saying before. Give me a head nod, right? You've heard this saying before, 100%. Because if you can't take care of yourself, if you can't physically be healthy, if you can't nourish yourself, if you can't build for yourself, build your business, build your platform, how can you possibly say that your kids are your why or your family is your why? How can you provide for them? So my why is about me. My why is for my freedom financial freedom and the freedom to live wherever I want to live because I have a plan. My plan is to move to Puerto Rico and have a beach house. Now I got a lot of friends living in Puerto Rico right now and they're all living in a community with a golf course and all this cool stuff. And that's great. I'll go visit them. I'm going to be at the house. When I open my backsliding doors, I want to walk 10 feet into the sand and maybe another 40 feet into the ocean. That's what I want. That's a part of my freedom, not a part of my why, but a part of my freedom. Being able to support and take care of my family and move them there and take them on vacations and allow my kids today. This year, we're planning a trip to Japan. My kids want to go to Japan. How much culture will they have? How much more will they learn just by a simple 10 day trip to Japan? How much more will they have in their system growing up? That's freedom, the freedom and the ability to be able to do that. So when I wake up in the morning, I put my feet on the ground and I go, it's freedom day. Let's go. It's freedom day. Let's go. And I want to win every day to achieve what freedom means to me, not to you or not to anybody else, but what it means to me, because I know that when I accomplish those freedoms, I'm going to accomplish them. And the people around me, the people I love the most, will benefit from those freedoms. I also know that in order for me to achieve those freedoms, in order for me to get to those goals, in order for me to achieve them in a way that is beyond and outlandish and audacious, I can't do it alone. So now... I'm spreading this across to several people, my team, my organization, the people around me, my business partners, my, my title company, the mortgage folks, the insurance guys, the, the, the inspection folks that work with us and take care of us hand in hand, we're headed there together. And I'm at the front of this train, conducting and pushing the bar on how fast this train gets there every single day. So here's my challenge to you guys for, for, for this session. My challenge to you guys is to get a piece of paper. Remember I said we need that three ring binder and that loose leaf paper, right? Get that first paper. And I want you to write down what you believe your why is on the top of that paper. And I want you to dig into that why so deep that you either get to the bottom of that page or you're three pages deep trying to figure it out. Now, this conversation that I told you that I had with my coach, right? This was not a three minute conversation the way I made it sound. This was a three week exercise and conversation. Three weeks. It, can't, it, get, it took us three weeks to get to the word freedom, right? Because in my brain, I had so many things that I wanted to do and so many people I wanted to take care of that I couldn't understand. I, she was trying to get me to the point to understand that I needed to be selfish and be about me for this particular one part of the exercise. 
that I needed to take care of myself. That's when you realize, let me eat healthier. Let me, let me work out. Let me make sure I get that checked out with the doctor. Because now you start thinking about you. And again, can't take care of anybody else unless you take care of you. So my challenge to you is to sit down, write down what that why is. And I want you to look at that word, whatever it is. Let's say you write down most people. Most people are going to write down that if you have kids, you write down my kids. Like that's my kids is why I breathe, why I wake up in the morning, why, why I make money, why I go to work, why I hustle. I want you to look at that, sit right down my kids. I want you to look at that and go, but why? Why is it important to take care of them? Why? Now, I know that sounds like a crazy ass question, right? But think about how many people out there don't take care of their kids. You're doing it, right? But why? What's your focus? And dig deep into that. And when you write whatever that is to you, question that as well. Question it so hard that you eventually get to something that you can't question anymore, that it becomes vitalizing. Once you get to that word, by the way, like I told you, mine took three weeks to get to, yours could be in 10 minutes or it could be in 10 weeks. Who knows? I don't know. What I would love is at some point when we get interactive, I want to hear what that is and why it is to you. Listen, when people, we have done exercises like this where we have seen people cry when they finally figure it out. I'm not saying you have to, and I'm not saying you got to dig in until you start crying. What I'm saying is, this is how effective this becomes. When you get to that particular thing, whatever it is, you're going to find in yourself, down to your soul, a newfound purpose to wake up every single morning and put it in. I wake up in the morning, I put my feet down, I go, it's freedom day. Have I achieved the freedoms and what they mean to me? No. But every day I wake up in the morning, I'm working towards that. I'm working towards that. And for me, I love my word because my word is uh, uh, flexible, right? My kids go to college. I'm living in that beach house. There's enough money coming in from the businesses we've built. I'm still every day focused on developing freedoms, more freedoms. I joke with my wife all the time. I go, one of my biggest purposes for this freedom is I need to live to 110 years old because my wife is 10 years younger than me. And she comes from really good genes. Right. Her grandmother is going to live to 110, I think. So I need to live long enough to be able to spend as much time as I can with her. It's a joke that we have. But if I don't take care of myself, it would be absolutely impossible. To even get to 90 for that matter. You're going to find that when you do this exercise, you're going to develop a. a, a I mean, just an outstanding, amazing growth opportunity for yourself. This is a growth exercise. This is the exercise that allows you to really, really, truly understand or finally realize why you do what you do every single day. So exercise for the week. Take that piece of paper, write your why down on the top, whatever triggers, whatever comes up first, and dig into it until you get to something that makes you emotional. When you get to something that makes you emotional, question it anyway. And if you have no other answers for the questions that you're asking it, that's it. And then you're going to write down your final answer on the next sheet of paper. And you're not going to throw that paper away. It's going to remain in your SOP. And the reason that that paper, the worksheet that you're going to be working on is going to remain in your SOP is because I want you to forever be able to go back and understand how you got to the final answer what the path was, what the method was. And once you reach that final answer, I want you to go to the next clear page that you have and in pencil, in pencil, I want you to write down your final why. Why are we doing it in pencil? Because I want it to be able to be something that you can erase and update. Because there might be somebody on this call right now that is single and ready to mingle and ain't got no kids at home. And their why right now is completely different than it, would, than it will be if they got married and had five kids. It's very different. Things change. Life changes, right? You might have an abundant support right now that you may not have two years from now. There's so many different things. Life happens. It just happens. 
So I'm going to open up now. I'm going to change this gallery view, and uh, I'm going to open up now and and open up to some questions, uh, some some exercise questions on where you think that you might need to ask to be able to achieve what you need to achieve over the next week. Now. I will call on you guys next week. I will pick a few of you to see if you've actually reached your why. And if you can share it with us, that'd be absolutely amazing. You don't have to. I just want to put that out. Like if I pick on you, if I say, hey, Roger, what's your why? And you say, hey, Dave, look, I'm not, I don't want to share it. That's okay. That's okay. Because your why is personal. I'm happy to share mine because I, I have this belief that the louder and the more I say it, the more the universe and God will hear me. Right? I just believe in that. Okay? So... But if you don't want to, if it's extremely personal to you, you keep it to yourself. But if you do want to share, I want to know. And I think by you sharing and telling us, it's going to be a kind of an interactive coaching session because I'm going to be able to ask you how you got there. And by you explaining how you got to that, why, it's going to help the rest of the group that hasn't achieved the goal of figuring out their why. It's going to help them get there too. They're going to have some aha moments right? They're going to have some moments of like clarity, you know, and that moment of clarity is going to help them achieve their goals. So you're going to be interactively coaching somebody else in the method, right? Okay. Um, next week, we get right into the 531. Um, so I want to open up any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that before we shut down for the day. Hey, brother. Um, we haven't talked yet, but uh, he... Um, up, yeah. Hey, this isn't planned either, but I got my freedom shirt on. So yes. it wasn't planned, but <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, man. <laughs> it just worked out that way. Um, I love your story. Thank you for sharing. Um, but when you and I connect, I, I can definitely relate to you with a lot that you've, you've been through. Um, and I'm hoping to eventually get to where you are. Um, but, uh, no, I appreciate you, you, putting your story out there and yourself out there and sharing this, this value with us. Um, it, it was definitely good. And, uh, I look forward to, to learning more with you guys. Awesome, man. Awesome. I really appreciate you, bro. Thanks, man. Looking forward to working with you as well. hundred percent. All right. Anybody else want to jump in question, comments, concerns, excitement. All right. Um, again, every Thursday, 11 AM Eastern standard time. I look forward to seeing you guys jump in, join us, share it with other folks, bring folks in that you know are gonna benefit from this. Um, I would love to see us reach 100 people in the room every week, you know? So uh, much love to you guys. Have a fantastic week. Please don't forget to do your homework. It's important. This is for you, not for me. It's for you. All right, guys, take care. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate of course. it. Thank you, David. Thank you again, Dave.